Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. OK. Good? OK. Um, since you are from the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock here, Hailu, you've been charged with, in a broad ministerial meeting, you want to promote higher yielding varieties of maize. Well, not from the Go back. Oh, Go back. sorry. Yeah. Oh, you are. Uh, so who's? Oh, Kumara and Ben. There you go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Kumara and Ben. You are. Um, you've just come out of a meeting with the minister, and uh, the minister has been aggressively promoting the use of high-yielding varieties of maize. Um, we are thinking about deploying genetically modified organism maize. Um, the idea behind this is that there is a higher yield per unit area. Uh, you as part of the government will provide uh, fertilizer and seed for one year, but thereafter you hope the farmers will start buying the fertilizer on their own. The cost is $20 per 50 kilogram sack. Okay. Um, the minister is pushing these ideas towards you because it's part of a structural adjustment program that the World Bank is implementing. Okay, so that's your role. Uh, who are the farmers again? Okay, Ura and uh, Abeja. Um, there's some talk uh, in your area about there being some land sales that will incorporate part of the protected area. Some of the farmers have thought about maybe selling their land to make the protected area a bit bigger. You've been historically dependent on maize cultivation. Um, there were some government officials uh, that Kumara had sent to, to visit you, and they had talked about the idea of introducing GMO maize, but you guys said that, no, we don't really want to do that. We don't think it's natural to deploy GMO maize. However, there have been a lot of droughts in your area. Uh, in fact, you are experiencing one right now. Surprise, surprise. Um, now, the other problem has been that the price of maize per, per kilo has been falling because the government is also importing cheap maize to, to accommodate a shortfall. Okay? Um, your average income is about $800 a year, and that is much less than the national average of $2,500. So you are actually in the poverty line. Um, your average family size is about 3.9 children for fam per family. And y uh, the average number of years of schooling for, your, for farmers is about 10 years. OK? That's what, that's what you have. Now, where are the pastoralists? There we go. Domene and, and Yanko. Now, uh, you guys have been illegally forest uh, grazing in the forest um, because you've overgrazed the surrounding land. Um, we've, the scientists have come in. There was a team from, from a university in America that had come in and done a survey. And we found that uh, there's evidence to suggest that livestock grazing is negative of negatively affecting the caracal, which is a type of cat, um, and the weaver, but it has no effect on the shrew. Um, there's been, uh, you've suffered uh, chronic water shortages from the drought. Uh, the, the rivers leading out of the forest are drying up. Um, the caracal is pre predating on some of the calves, sheep and goats of the farmers. So you have human wildlife conflict. Your average family size is much larger. You have 6.7 children um, per family. Um, the average years of schooling is much less. You've only gone to six years of school versus 10 years of school for the farmers. And some pastoralists are moving to the south where it is wetter, um, and there have been some tensions between the pastoralists and the farmers. So Ura does not like Temene very much, OK? Even though their relatives are, are intermarried, OK? Uh, where's Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife? There we go. Uh, currently, the country of Bilalia uh, derives 10% of its GDP from tourism. The government has set aside a strategic plan, Vision 20, 2030, which is they want to grow tourism GDP to 30%. Uh, the strategic plan suggests that the GDP increase will come from a network of new protected areas. And this is going to be a trial for what might be 10 to 12 new protected areas. Okay. This is the first trial. You want it to be successful so that it can be replicated in order to achieve the Vision 2030. Okay? 
Uh, practitioners, where are we? Lee, <laughs> uh, the international practitioner. Um, you're going to provide 40% uh, of a $1 million budget. Um, and uh, your emphasis is to prioritize the weaver and the caracal because that is, uh, that is the conservation priority that you've decided on in Washington, D.C. Um, the state practitioners. Um, you want to prioritize just the caracal because it's, uh, the tourists are really interested. We did some surveys. We went to some European capitals and we asked some potential tourists what they want to come and see in the Republic of Bilalia and they said they really want to come and see the caracal. Okay? The local practitioners. Yeah. You want to prioritize the shrew because to the farmers, to Ura and Abeje, the shrew has some sacred value. Okay? Tourism stakeholders at the back. You want to build a luxury tourism resort uh, with, in partnership with an international safari company. You don't like seeing cows, so you don't want to have any cows near the lodge. Uh, you want to consider, although you are not completely sold on the idea, of potentially having hunting tourism and hunting of caracals. Okay? There's a particular set of tourists from a particular country that likes to hunt caracals. Um, in order, but you're also interested in conserving and helping people, and so you've agreed that you're going to build a school halfway between the north and the south, but unfortunately your budget doesn't give you the capacity to uh, run the school, but you'll build it. Okay? And they hope that they will be able to fund the construction of the school from donations from tourists. Okay? And the lodge that you're proposing to build will employ about 80 people. Okay? So here's the map again. Okay? So the proposed lodge site, the main road, there's Lake Emily. Um, here are the verified caracal sightings, the wide river, um, the proposed school site, and the scale is there about five kilometers. Okay? Now, I want you to take about eight to ten minutes, discuss amongst yourselves the relative merits and demerits of the proposal. What do you think will work from your particular perspective? What might you willing to compromise on? And what are you not willing to compromise on? And then we're going to come back. We've been invited to a hotel and we have a little bit of a conference room and we're going to debate uh, the merit of this proposal as it stands. Do we trust this process given that it's a country called Bilalia and the discussion is moderated by a guy named Bilal? Um, uh, there's no relation. I don't think I even want to come to the No, there's no relationship sure? between. Yeah, I'm absolutely sure. You're going to be able to prove that. The, the, the country was, uh, was founded by uh, a revolutionary called uh, Bilal, uh, but there's no relation to the moderator. Um, but he was a, he was a Marxist revolutionary. And, and the way, I don't trust you. I mean, no, no, but I'm a, I, I, I'm, I'm a capitalist. <laughs> um, I was educated in America and I've learned to be Western. Okay? Uh, Lee. Can you tell us more about the area? You said a river comes out of it. Does that mean it's a mountain? Is it, the, is it really the watershed, the source of the river? And what's the land tenure situation? So there's a bit of a mountain over here, um, but that has all been fenced off. Okay? Um, uh, there is a so, so it's a weird slope in that there, this is sort of the, the leeward side of the mountain um, and there's a bit of a slope going here and then the river feeds back into the ocean like that. So it makes a bit of a curve. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. And okay. what's, what's that? Who owns the land? Yeah. Uh, this land? This land has been clearly demarcated. Everyone has individual titles, so that's where the proposal is to maybe um, buy up some of the land from the farmers. But the, the land tenure claims here are vague. What about in the middle? Uh, on this side? No, in the middle where they have shaded. The oh, this is no. This is this is the proposed boundary of the. Who owns that land? Uh, the state. Ah. The state owns that land. So we don't have to worry about buying land. You don't have to worry about buying land. That's the state land. And did the farmers and pastoralists recognize that that's, do, do they accept state? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so they accept that. Yeah. yeah. So this was, um, 
uh, this this was in the works for a long time, but it, the government neither had the funding nor the um, impetus to to move forward on this. And now, uh, with the Vision 2030, we are moving forward very strongly in this direction. Okay. But there's no past history of conservation or conflict between. They've been his the historical skirmishes that have occurred between farmers and pastoralists. Okay. Yeah. But there, there, there was always a, a little bit of an encampment near the proposed lodge, which is where some rangers had been stationed. But they did not have clearly, clearly defined roles. Yeah. Ben. Are the farmers expanding the farms as well? Are the farmers expanding the forest? The farms. Expanding into the forest? No. Okay. No. Um, part of that was because the rangers that were stationed near the proposed lodge they were actually recruited from the, the farming communities, but not from the pastoralist communities. And so they had reached an agreement, informal agreement, not, not clearly identified or legalized, that they would not move for, further than this proposed line. So in a, in a way, it's a bit strange to some other protected areas, but in other ways, it is quite common. Yeah. So there's unique sharing agreements. But there are tensions that exist between the pastoralists and the farmers. Okay, so I'll leave the map up and I want you to take eight to ten minutes and debate this and then I'm going to come back and moderate. Okay, you can ask me questions as I go. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Um, welcome to the first meeting of the proposed establishment of the, the Mon uh, what Montalowi uh, protected area. I'm not sure I have everyone's attention. Thank you. We have a proposal on the table for the establishment of the uh, Montalowi uh, conservation area. This first information meeting is to elicit feedback regarding current the current proposal which has been circulated to you. At this point, the motion is put on the table to open the proposal for debate. Do we have a second? Second, seconded. I'm trying to make it a bit more formal. Okay. The proposal is open for debate on the table. Um, as moderator, uh, I am sworn, sworn to impartiality. <laughs> I hope that <laughs> I hope that appeases your. <laughs> Why is there an M on the proposal? Oh, I I, I think that must be a. Does the University of Michigan have some sort of financial interest in this? No, no. I I, I think this must be a, some sort of recycled slide from one of the professors who had given a presentation previously. Um, the current proposal. We'll start with uh, a comment of no more than one and a half minutes long. And by random selection, the first comment goes to the international conservation practitioner. Ah, great. <laughs> great. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. We uh, strongly support this new protected area. We'd like to encourage the largest reserve area possible. Uh, we have a couple of issues of concern, but if we can be involved, there are several things that we can do within our budgetary resources that we'd like to contribute to help this reserve become a reality. Um, one thing that we have to note is that we oppose the hunting of the caracal. Uh, we have a board member who's a small cat specialist, and um, while um, we as individuals might not have a problem with the hunting proposal, uh, our organization may, and it might force us to withdraw any support or any involvement in the reserve if, the, if we can't resolve the issue of the hunting of the caracal. Uh, while that's a small issue, it's a potential showstopper for us, so we're highlighting for other people that that's of concern. Um, if, um, if we can be involved, and we certainly think we can be because this is a very important area, uh, we would, within our own budget resources, develop a weaver interpretation program that will help tourists better understand why they should come and, and see the weaver, but also uh, for local communities to understand the weaver and its international importance as a rare endemic species. 
Uh, we'll fund a full biological inventory of the reserve because the fact that the weaver's here indicates that other species of importance may be here yet unrecognized. Uh, we'll fund a local NGO to work with farmers and pastoralists to document sites of traditional importance within the protected area, uh, especially the shrew, but also other sites uh, so that they can be respected as the reserve is being zoned. And um, finally, we're, op we're open to other suggestions of things we might be able to be involved with. But we also have a fund that lets uh, us fund local NGOs to work with state authorities to delimit new protected areas in uh, participation with local communities. Uh, we assume that the local communities, are, their support will be existing for this protected area. But where that reserve boundary goes can be very important. And uh, we want to be sure that uh, the Parks Authority is working very closely with local communities to find boundary limits that are easily recognizable and accepted by both the pastoralist and, and the farming community. And that's probably more than a minute and a half, but I do have to highlight the two areas that we're really concerned about that might threaten the future of the reserve, and those are the uh, wastewater from the lodge. We're concerned about Lake Emily, our uh, herpetologists, very important people herpetologists, have told us that there are potential uh, undiscovered species in Lake Emily, and we are concerned that the uh, wastewater from the lodge might uh, damage Lake Emily, and that we need to understand how that might be managed, both to better understand the biodiversity of the lake and, and how wastewater would be um, handled. But even more importantly, uh, we're concerned about caracal impacts on local farmers and how to manage that and grazing within the reserve, which are the two big sort of uh, conflicts with local communities we could see with this reserve. So that's uh, our position. We really love this idea. The fact that it's built around a species that's found only here should be of international and national and local importance and pride, and, and we hope this proposal moves ahead. The Chair thanks the participant from the International Conservation Practice. The Chair now recognizes uh, participants from the Ministry of uh, Agriculture and Livestock.